whatever you like to call it so i'll send it that's fine okay uh, sir Let can us... you please upload the same on vlearn as well i really do not know how to do that but what i can do is that i will send the link to everybody in that ch3103 class okay sir is that all right you can uh, watch from there right yes sir but it is uh, generally easier for us because everything is in one place in we learn so if okay. you upload the notes and the link on uh, we learn then it's easily accessible to us okay i will talk to sanjeev today to see how to upload these videos in the we learn okay okay sir. thank the you class, the class class notes are already been sent to you okay yes, and in any case i will send the class notes by the email that's fine okay anything else no sir thank you okay great so let us get on this business maybe some of you came later uh, let us see uh, i have been told also to do this kind of stuff so let us see so you see remember we want to deal with the real systems so the box that we studied it was not very realistic so that one of the real boxes could be what i have drawn something like this in the barrier okay and the finite box they both look like the Uh, the pbs problem but there is a problem which is what we want to understand so today before we begin any of this the barrier or the finite box you can see that they are actually they are actually some sort of uh, some sort of uh, what should i say decorations of this problem which i have written on the right side you see that so these both these problems have a situation where you can see something like this so that is why i have broken this problem into even simpler pieces why this is precisely because you will see that immediately the mathematical complexity we can just talk about the real system but we also have to be worried about the how we can deal with it quantum mechanics right so at the moment if i just straight away want to jump from your particle in a box to this problem there is some problem you will see that so just to make the background for this any of these problems i am actually working on this problem because this will make lot of things lot of backgrounds for us so with this we study this problem so this is a state potential problem you can see that there is a state potential problem in this problem because this guy you see that this this like this and here you have a situation like this so i want to understand what happens to this then i can also take this problem also another you see that so again for this also you can see i have a situation like this and i can take from the right side also another state potential so these are actually basically two state potential joined in a different way so that's why i am interested to understand this problem but this problem has two situations i have drawn it you see that e is less so this is the this is the v0 right and this is the maximum of the potential and this is the e less than v0 situation and another is the e greater than v0 situation which is here okay so let us first begin the e less than v0 and while we uh, you know uh, it is if i try to derive everything in the class then it will not be really interesting so what happens is that i have tried to derive something but i will leave most of the things to your for your assignment or exercise okay so let us see so this is the problem okay so actually before we begin you should also realize that in reality we i have made this so this is actually there is a discontinuity here but what we really are interested is something like this it looks nice it is mathematically it is mathematically uh, more uh attractive to me but when i want to solve this problem it is much more difficult than this problem because there is just there is a curve you know this curve the moment i make this curve in the potential you will see that my schrodinger equation will be much harder to solve that's why i have taken this it is a much easier form of this guy okay everybody understands that so the situations are this e is less than v0 first we will consider this situation then we'll go to this case okay so i have written it is an idealization of the potential which is a okay so my potential is in this form v is 
I can took I could take a constant, but it doesn't make any difference if I make it zero. So this is my classically allowed region because the minimum is zero, energy is here, so E is greater than zero, so it is a classically acceptable region or classically allowed. And here I see that my V is here, okay, and the energy is below, right? So it is actually the E is classically forbidden region, okay, right? So I can see that my case one, I have to write Schrodinger equation in both regions. In this region, the idea of all these problems is that, you know, we cannot solve everything in the class, but let us generalize the problem. The problem is that when you have a situation like this, suppose you have, you can also have a problem like this. In, 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 you can have a situation like this, many such things. What are you going to do? So we cannot solve each of these. So there is a general principle. We are trying to understand that. So what happens is that every time you have a situation like that, you identify the unique regions where you need to solve the Schrodinger equation. That means in this particular problem, I have a region one, I have a region two, I have a region three, I have a region four, I have a region five and six. What will happen after that? Then what you have to do, you have to join the hooks because that is how you understand. So these are the hooking points. So you will write the Schrodinger equation in each of these regions, and then you will try to join the hooks by imposing the boundary condition. That means what? For, so you can see that this is actually the first one we have taken. So what the strategy is, right? Schrodinger equation for region one, Schrodinger equation for region two, and then you join the hooks at this point, common point. So that means the wave function in this region, x less than zero, say this is zero, x less than region and x greater than zero region must be joined at this point. Not only the wave function, but also their derivatives. So that will give me the total wave function, right? So let us follow this prescription. So this is the general prescription for all such problems. There is nothing very special about it. Once you understand this much, it is not a hard problem. So I just write that d squared psi dx squared plus k squared psi is equal to zero, k is equal to root of, so I have psi is equal to zero. So I can straight away write this, k is equal to twice m u h cross cross x less than zero, right? So that is my region one and this region two d square psi dx square minus k square psi is zero. So this is not k, this is kappa. So there is this capital K, this is k and this is kappa. So k I have written because your E is less than v0, I have written in this form. I have just written in the form which is v0 minus E. So I have these two equations to be solved. Right? So you know the solutions of these two equations which is here, a to the power i k x plus b to the power minus i k x in the x less than zero region and c to the power kappa x plus d to the power minus kappa x. Okay, this is for the x greater than zero region. And I have written the classically allowed and classically forbidden regions. Now, once we have understood this much, let us look at what is the meaning of a, b, c, d. So a, b, c, d, a, b came from these sides. C, D came from these sides, okay? So what is A? A is e to the power i k x plus B e to the power minus i k x. So that means A is almost describing like an incident wave which is going from left to right to this potential barrier, to this potential step. And B, so this is what I call an incident wave, okay? And the B portion is almost like describing like the reflection of this from the barrier. Right? So that is how I understand the physics. So e to the power i kappa, sorry, kx plus b to the power minus i kx. So a, b will be related to these probabilities of reflection and transmission. We'll see that. And c is, or similarly in the right direction, c is also become describing something like this and d is something like this. Okay. But the problem with this that I cannot straight away take this as such because my wave function is not acceptable at the x tends to, so this side is actually your minus infinity, this side is your plus infinity, okay? So if I do that, so you see that there is a problem with this term, c to the power e kappa x, 
because it becomes to infinity it goes to infinity if is x if x goes to infinity so that means i must reject this term okay so that gives me my this portion a to the power i x this remains as such and this i have eliminated the minus sorry the positive term on the grounds of physical situation if i do that now i have told you i have to join the hooks so that means i have a psi at this region which is x less than 0 and i have a psi which is in the right right side of the state which is x greater than 0 and also i have to equate the derivatives at the x less than 0 and x greater than 0 side so this is the only trick that you have to work out okay so it is not very difficult maybe i can do some let us see first so if i say zero in both sides what happens so this is e to a x is equal to zero what happens a plus b is equal to d so that's what i have written a plus b equals to d and you take a derivative of this because this guy so this derivative you take i k a e to the, maybe we can write first one we'll derive actually okay then i will leave it for you let us derive one of them okay so i can write i have actually worked it out for you so i have a situation so let us first eliminate a a plus b is equal to d okay the second one is i k a minus b equal to cup sorry i k a minus b is equal to cup or d so this line is gone okay so what i want to do is that i want to eliminate b and i want to eliminate d these are these are the two things that i want to do why you will see that so let us see i k a Minus b is what d minus a minus d minus a is equal to kappa d, right? So i k now this should be plus, right? So twice a minus d is equal to kappa d. Okay, so you can write so twice i k. A minus i k d is equal to kappa d. So that means what twice i k a is equal to k i k into d. So that means d is d over a. You want to write d over write d over a is what twice i k over kappa plus i k so similarly you can eliminate b you can eliminate uh, d and b both so let me write down the other expression so eventually you can rearrange this to write something which is already written here actually so once you do this you can write this a and d first eliminate b and from here you eliminate a okay so b and d so what do i see let us see here what is the meaning of this term what kind of a wave function is that this is my final wave function which i am actually uh, which i am actually simplifying so what kind of a wave function is that what is the nature of this wave function let us use the proper term somebody please tell in the class what kind of a function is that anybody please we need to be uh, we need to be comp uh, we need to be acquainted with the terms so this is an oscillatory function okay this is an oscillatory function and this is what kind of a function is that all of you know please tell what function is that this is an exponential function right 
So the first part is then oscillatory part joined smoothly to its exponential part two for all e between zero and v zero because you started with zero and v zero. We are in this region, right? So and I have said that e is less than v zero. That means partic but it is greater than zero. So it is possible to go like this, but it cannot be jump like this. The classical mechanics forbids this region. That is why it is classically forbidden. We are trying to understand if quantum mechanics also tells the same thing. That's what is the problem. So we see that. Now, so that means I see that my spectrum is continuous. What is meaning? I'll show you the picture, actually, the plot in the next. But I can take the help of this b by a and i can write b by a and d by a okay so i can write b by a is this in this form okay you do this exercise it is not very difficult there is a there is a this this is the numerator and the denominator just to do rearrangement you know put the proper values of kappa and k this was already there so b minus b by a and so you can do this. These are little bit mathematical exercise. You do this algebra, then only you will understand what is going on. But you should also find out that the modulus value of b by a is one. Okay, and you can write is this thing in these three different forms: b by a is equal to e to the power i alpha, where alpha is given by this, d by a is this, where it one plus e to the power i alpha. These are your exercises. So I can use these expressions to finally write from psi from this to this form. That is my final exercise, final uh, final plot, final form. Okay, this is the final form of wave function. This is x less than zero and x greater than zero. You can see that what is happening. There is an a e to the power i alpha by two, a e to the power i alpha by two, cos alpha by two e to the power minus kappa x. So I have written a few things, so you can see that x less than zero. This is basically a e to the power i k x multiplied by. If I consider that whole problem, which is the time dependence also added to it, so that means there will be an e to the power minus i a t over h cross time multiplied, just like in the free particle problem you saw. So that is going to be a plane wave of amplitude a, incident from left to right on the potential step. That is what is the meaning. Right and b, what is the b term? I told you in the beginning. So this will be a reflected plane wave of amplitude b. Right, you can always use this term. These terms will be simply a multiplication because their potential is time independent. So I can always write the time dependent part as a factor. So this this b and a is actually the ratio of the intensity of reflected probability density. So what is b? B is the velocity worry too much about this. So eventually what I mean to say is that my B square, why did I do all this exercise? Because I want to see if there is any possibility of finding the particle reflected from here to here. Uh, I also want to see if the particle is going from here to here, the transmitted, which is classically forbidden. That's what I am going, trying to do. So the R is going to give the probability of finding the particle here. T is going to give you the probability of finding the particle here transmitted. This is the transmission, right? Which will be governed by the D and A. And this will be governed by B and A. Okay. That's why we are doing all this. So if I do that, I, I have already seen that B by A is actually modulus one. So that means what? That means I have a total reflection. I have a total reflection which is given by this expression. That means my t is equal to zero, right? Because r plus t has to be one. You cannot have that anything other than one. So that means so at the x less than two z, x, at the x less than zero, you can simplify this. This is just x less than zero. You can write size x squared in this form in both regions. That's what we have written. Okay, it is not very so you can see that it's an oscillatory behavior which is purely quantum mechanical. Okay, effects between incident and reflected because in class why it is becoming oscillatory? Because in classical mechanics, you said that the it should be completely reflected. 
because this is too high for it so it cannot go there it should be just going and coming back and you know that in the wave mechanics this all these uh, oscillations like sin x and cos x functions in the even in the free particle we have showed that if you make a and b equal to same you have an interference to which is giving rise to the sin x and cos x functions okay so it is not very surprising from quantum mechanics that that should happen so and that is what happened but what is good is that r is equal to 1 which is good because this is something which is in accordance with classical mechanics a particle with e less than 0 v0 should be reflected by the potential state that's fine that is good for you okay so and what happens to the x greater than 0 region x greater than d0, you can write the wave function in this form from the second equation. So this expression decreases rapidly with increasing x. You can see that. But there is a finite probability of finding the particle in the classically forbidden region in the x greater than 0. So that is where the problem is. That is where the problem is. So I have a probable finite probability of finding the particle in this side. You see, this is not the something that I expected. But I see that there is a finite probability of finding. So that is what we call something like a leakage. We'll have to talk more about it. But so I can see that now look at the wave function. Yeah. So I said that so this is my barrier. Okay. So don't worry about y. So this is actually x. So this is better to write psi x. So I have this oscillatory nature in the x less than zero region. Okay. But then I have an exponential which is slowly decreasing. That is something very strange. And this is the origin of your barrier uh, penetration or the so-called tunneling effect. Okay, you might not have read the step potential, you have read something else. So we'll see that. But this is the origin of this, potent, of this problem. So this expression decreases rapidly with increasing x, but there is a finite probability of finding the particle in the classically forbidden region, which is x greater than 0. And that is what is the manifestation of quantum mechanics and non-classical phenomenon of the barrier part penetration. I can also make a limiting case. This is also left for you as an exercise when v0 is infinity. That means what? Remember what is v0? v0 is this thing. If you make it V0 to be very high, infinite, what will happen? So you can see from here. So your V0 is infinity. That means you can prove that B by A will be minus 1 and D by A will be 0. And B is equal to minus A. So D is equal to 0. Then I can write psi x in this particular case in this form. Right. And of course, here it is 0. So that means if I take an infinitely high barrier, psi vanishes at x is equal to remember this, and also x greater than zero. At x greater than zero. And at x is equal to zero, Vx makes infinite jump. If at Vx is equal to zero, uh, sorry, at x is equal to zero, Vx makes remember at x is equal to zero, what was happening to Vx? There is an infinite jump. That means there is a discontinuity in the Vx. So if you have an infinite jump in the potential, quantum mechanics allows this much relaxation to have a, so there are first and second discontinuities. So if I have an infinite discontinuity at Vx, I can have some relaxation in the potentials, sorry, wave functions uh, acceptability. That means the first derivative can be discontinuous. Okay. So, this is more or less this problem. Okay, so I think once I have discussed this problem, now I want to go to the second case. This one. So, what is going to happen to this one? I, I guess we should have some discussion. Anybody wants to say something? Yes, please. Okay. I hope you are able to understand or I am able to explain things properly, you know, but please don't hesitate to ask questions. That's fine because uh, it, it is difficult to 
uh, I understand that you may not have a good connection or you may not have a proper uh, things, you know, but please uh, feel free to ask questions. I am always happy. Okay, so let us go to the second case. So what is going to happen to the second case? What is the surprise for us? Okay, second case. Okay, maybe I I did not draw the picture. Okay, so just uh, sorry. Yeah, second stage means second step means is what do I expect? A particle which is come incident from the left side with a with an energy which is higher than V zero. Okay, and it is always like that. So do I have to consider regions do i have a region problem or i can just take one region how is the region going to affect because it is constant it is everywhere it is greater than v0 so how do i solve this problem see actual deriving the equations is not so exciting you can i am pretty sure all of you can do that but what really disturbs the students is that they are not able to make the connection to the chemistry and that's why in this class, I will always try to pay more attention to that portion. You know, otherwise it becomes very boring and you think that, oh, why it is, why it is, why it, and that really is the whole problem. That's why I'm speaking more about the connection to the chemistry and physics. Okay, and leaving the, the mathematical exercises for your assignments. Okay, so, how can I solve this problem now? Who can say? Any comments would be uh, nice to hear. Bolo, bolo. Come on, don't say completely silent, man. Make some noise, you know. All of you don't have to mute. Sometimes we speak, you know. This is almost half an hour. So let us have some noise, you know. Hello. Okay. I guess uh, we can just then. So this is the situation. So E is greater than B0. In this case, I cannot just work one case. Why? Because yes, here also E is zero, higher than this. Here also this. Here also this. But the problem is that here your E is all the time same. But here, you in this region, you did not have anything about V0. But in this region, you have something called V0. That's why the I do have to write two regions, the Schrodinger equation in two regions. And again, I have to hook. But it is not very difficult now because we have illustrated the first problem. So let us see how it can be done. So I again write this in this form. You can do this a little bit uh, rearrangement of the equations. So this is x less than 0. This is, I hope it is not a, this is 0, OK? And so d squared psi dx square plus k square psi x is equal to 0. And I give another symbol, which is k prime, right? And x greater than 0. So this is e greater than v0. That's why I have chosen to keep it in this form, OK? So let me also point out this fact, if you have not already realized that, the whole game of quantum mechanics actually, in a sense, it's a matter of small i. You see that? It's a matter of small i. It is this little i which was not, either was there or not was there. That is making the, all the difficulties. And all the difficulties means all the strangeness associated with quantum mechanics. And that is also happening because of this plus and plus plus signs in these equations and the form of k and k prime. If you see, recall, in the previous problem, I did not have an i over here. Okay, because one of them was classically allowed region, one of them was classically forbidden region. But in this case, what is happening is that my e aj. So this is the problem. This is the potential. So in classical mechanics. The particle will just go like this. What is the problem? 
right? So what is going to be surprising for us is that in this case even, I have very strange problem that I will see that even though the particle can go unobstructed, but there is a possibility that particle will also come back. You know, there is a finite probability of reflection, which was never thought about, which nobody thought. It is not possible. But I see that that will happen. So I can again write the solutions of these two equations in this form, x less than 0, x greater than 0. So I can see that both forms are oscillatory, right? You remember, in the first case, I had an oscillatory nature in the, this side and an exponential nature. Remember, I removed one of the plus terms in the exponential because it was not acceptable for me because the wave function was going to infinite. Right? So I, I removed that term. But in this case, I have a c e to the power i k prime x plus d e to the power minus i k prime. Now let us make some discussion about how is this particle moving. So I let us assume that I have the particle is incident from the left. Okay? So that means what? Consider left to right motion. I can make the right to left motions. The equations will be different. You have to solve it in a in the same way, but the physics will be completely analogous, but the equations will change sign here and there. Okay, so that doesn't, uh, that is not very uh, surprising. So I'll take the left to right case and see. So that means I have the particle which is going from this to this, and then if, uh, if possible, the particle may come back here. But I cannot want to see a situation that that there should be no reflection from region two. This is my reason one. There is my this is my reason two because the particle is eventually going from left to right. It must go eventually to the right. Something may happen in the middle, but at the end of the day, particle particle cannot come back here, right? So that means I have to eliminate this guy. Because this represents reflection from region 2, which is not possible, right? So I am eventually landing to this situation, A, B, and C. What is A? A is actually representing the amplitude of the incident wave, like this. What is B? Like this. B is representing the amplitude of the reflected wave. What is C? C is this guy in the x greater than 0 region. C is representing the amplitude of the transmitted wave. So just like the previous problem, I will also try to find out the ratios of the transmission coefficient and the reflection coefficient. So quant classical mechanics says that particle with V e greater than V0 will always pass the potential step. No question asked, period. Particle just goes like this, like this. It will pass, no problem whatsoever, right? Now, quantum mechanics, what it will say, we'll do that. So you'll see that the incident will be partly transmitted and also partly reflected. That is very something strange. And we are going to prove that that is, that is what is happening. So my job is again very simple. I have reason one and two. I will make the wave function equal at this point. So that means psi x less than zero is equal to psi x greater than 0, and this i dx at x less than 0, dx at x greater than 0. That is what I do here. So a plus b is equal to c. You can see that a plus b equal to c. And then the take the derivatives of this guy and derivatives of this guy, then put x is equal to 0. That will eventually give you this equation. Right? So I am coming to these two equations, these two conditions. So I can solve this for once I can eliminate B, once I can eliminate C to get these two equations. B by A is equal to K minus K prime over K plus K prime. And C over A is equal to twice K over K plus K prime. Very simple mathematical, uh, just do little algebra. Okay, so I can see that since the solution can be smoothly joined in this way, for all values of e greater than v0, the solution is again continuous. Remember this picture, right? So I can go like this, 
then I can go like this. But something need to be seen. Something will see. Okay. So in this case, I will these things you can do v is equal to nothing v is nothing but the velocity so it is p a is equal to mv you can you know that p is equal to h cross k i can write so v is equal to h cross k over me and similarly in the right side you can write you have a different wave number in this in the previous case i had the same and here i have k prime because k prime is now given by this expression remember so this side and this side, I have different wave numbers. So my velocity V prime is also same. The mass is same. Okay. So I can write this kind of stuff from here. So you can easily prove this identity, which is a little bit, uh, I, I, I have just written, but you prove it. Okay. It is not a big deal. Well, why did I do all these steps? I did all these steps to eventually come to this expression b over a square is equal to this. Remember k and k prime can be written okay, in terms of e and v0. So you can do this. Okay, You can do this as, I think there is nothing to do. You just put these proper values of uh, k and k prime. Okay, So now r is plotted as a function of e by v0. Also included in the club is e less than v0. Let us see. So this is e by v0. Okay, and this is your R. What I have seen, so this is the E greater than V0. What did you see for, uh, uh, so this is E by V0. So this point is your E is equal to V0. And this side is E by V0 is less than, so E less than V0, this is E greater than V0. So that means in a sense, this plot is showing you the reflection for both the situations we considered. You see that this one corresponds to the first case we studied today. This side corresponds to the second case we are just studying now. Okay. So what do I see? What I, what I know is that from the E less than V0, which I just discussed, your R was 1. There was a total reflection. So that's why it is 1. You see that this is 1. So this is 1. Up to how much? E equal to V0. But the moment than e greater than v0, you have something less than r is slowly and slowly decreasing, 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 and then it goes like this. Right? That means there is the moment r is becoming anything but n, sorry, 1. You know, it cannot be more than 1, right? So if the moment r becomes less than 1, that means your t is actually becoming non zero. In this region, you had a total reflection. That means your transmission was zero, right? But in this case, because your R is becoming less than one, that means you have a finite possibility of transmission, which is complementary to this plot. In the next plot, we'll, I'll show you that. So at E is equal to V0, R is one, which is the case. So you can see that at as E by V0 continues to increase, that means after this, Okay, so beyond one, R decreases monotonically, which is the case. Okay, and tends to zero when E by V0 tends to infinity. E by V0, the more you go this side, E by V0 is becoming very and very large. So once you go to this side, eventually your R will be vanishing, right? Or very close to zero. Similarly, you can see that transmission Transmission, you can prove that it will be like this. So it is not zero. Okay. So it is something non zero. So these little exercises, you can work it out. So, so this is my T zero. And if I, I can consider a case where V zero is equal to close to zero, that means my step potential is very, my step is very little. You see that? The V0 is very small, that means like this. What will happen situation? We have in the previous case we have seen what happens to the V0 tends to infinity. Right? Now you see what happens to V0 tends to zero. So you do this exercise. If your V0 tends to zero, that means k will become to k prime because the only difference between k and k prime is in this expression. Look at this. 
k and k, this is k this is k prime so if your v0 tends to 0 these two expressions will be same so k will become k prime okay so if k and becomes equal to k prime then you can do these simplifications r is tending to 0 and t tends to 1 right but you must always be able to add r and 2 uh, to get the 1 which of course has to hold and I see that R and 2 depend only on the ratio V0 over E. Right. So that means the, there is a possibility of particle being partially reflected and transmitted. Remember, we are in this side. E greater than V0. So then I have a partial possibility of reflection and partial possibility of transmission. Right. So you can see that in this plot even better. So that means the particle has enough energy to cross over the step. There is a non-zero probability of it's being reflected. How did this happen? So let us look at the whole stuff can be summarized in this picture. Uh, so this portion was from here to here. I just add this portion complementary to this so r plus t and to give one okay so once again see so this can be r or t both this as r is this okay t t goes from this this okay so in where E is less than P0, you completely one. Until this point, your T is zero. Okay? And when you have E greater than P0, you have a non-zero probability of R. That means this plot, we already explained this. But also, if it is non-zero, and if you look at the expression for T, must also complement this plot r is less than zero must compensate for sum becomes that is what is so this is e this is e okay strange happen things happen in both the cases wave nature of the so as you can see as i discussed in the beginning let us see now come to the reality. We have to go to the abstraction, but we must always come back to the reality. So as I said in the beginning, so let us see. So, okay. So we just now, what happened? Okay. So we just concluded both situations in this state potential. Now we can see that obviously my next discussion will be about any of these guys, this guy. And this guy, this is nothing but the particle. So this was my particle in a box problem without this portion. Because I said V is equal to infinity. This is my in, that is the reason I said that, you, you know, in the beginning class, I, I, when I saw particle, I said that it is infinite box. Infinite box. And I also said that impenetrable. You understand why these words are very important? Because the moment I will make a finite box, which is my next case, you will see that the whole stuff is very, very different. That's why the particle in a box problem was particle in an infinite box with impenetrable. And why impenetrable? Because the moment you say that impenetrable, that means it cannot go from here to here. But the, if you say penetrable, that means particle can actually leak. That means you have something like this situation, right? So you can see that now my particle in a finite box problem, which is, so all these one or two lectures I took just to make the reality from particle in an infinite box to particle in a finite box. It's a matter of only I n word, which led me to do all this exercise. I did this today's problem just to simplify and just to make it easy for us to solve the particle in a finite box problem.
and particle in a barrier problem. Okay, so it will be very easy. You can see that now I can easily solve this because so what I'll do, I'll take this region. I, so I'll take this region, I'll take this region, I'll take this region. So I have to make two hooks. One is here, one is here. Psi in this region equal to psi in this region. Psi prime in this region is equal to psi prime in this region. That will give you one hook. And then psi in this region equal to psi in this region, etc., etc. You can see that. The same thing will happen. So no wonder, once you have understood this problem, it will be very easier for us to discuss this problem. Right. So once we do this problem, then what is so I, I plan to finish this guy very these two guys very quickly because then we can go to the real stuff. So now let us come to the atomic problem. What else I have to do? So I played around with the sizes of the box, shape of the box, right? What I have to do next? I have also learned what happens when you have more than one dimension, two dimensional box, three dimensional box. So you can understand that 2D or 3D box that you did, it was actually related to the particle in an infinite box. Okay, so you can also work it out the finite and two dimensional, sorry, more than one dimensional problems for these problems. Like these two cases we are going to deal, but this is a mathematical exercise. The concepts will not be very different. Basic concepts can be seen from the 1D problem too. So that's why you are not going to take it. But let us see what is the major steps for our journey. The next journey has to be that I must make the box not only rectangle. I need to look at something like this. I need to make something like this now. So there is a big difference from this to this. Right. So I need to understand what happens if the particle actually sits on the circle. And then you will see that what the circle is not very exciting because I have a three dimensional world. So I must look at what happens to a particle in a sphere. You understand? So you see the hierarchy of the movement. So once I have the particle in a sphere, you know that from particle in a box to particle in a uh, circle, at sphere, I need to do something called angular momentum, right? So can somebody please tell me that whether you have done angular momentum, I am sure you have done something, but if you can give me some reference point so that I know where to do the angular momentum in the class. Can somebody give me some uh, reference points? Which books or what, how much did you study the commutation relations, etc., etc. If you have studied anything, hello? Just say it, no, no problem. It's not an interview. Please help me. If you do not say anything, it will be very difficult because I may start from somewhere which may be completely irrelevant, irrelevant to. It may be that I am starting from something which is very basic or it may be that I am starting from something which may not be so basic. In either way, it is a problematic situation. So, so suppose, uh, let me ask specific questions. So suppose LX, LY, LG and L square commutation relations. Have you done that in the class? Have you done the ladder operator methods in the uh, quantum mechanics, eh, sorry, in the angular momentum to solve this? Please, somebody. Yes, somebody says yes, very good. So anybody else? You can write comment. I am not going to read your name, okay? Okay. Okay, so anyway, uh, oh, thank you very much, okay. So yes, I will do that. So I, my plan is that very good, I suggested, yeah. We started, but it would be great if we could give it. Okay, okay, very good. That's great. So that's what is my plan too. And uh, so, you know, I'll, you know, that what we studied today, you need to, uh, to get the full picture, you should derive those equations, you know, 
to fill the gaps then only then it becomes exciting so please stay in the journey because every year i teach this course after five six seven eight nine ten lectures certain students vanish from the class you know so don't make it like that so in the beginning we are going very slow i am always happy to uh, discuss your concern so please give stay with me okay i don't want you to vanish from the class okay so uh, and that's just do the exercises which are very trivial and i just let me know in the whatsapp or uh, email if you have any difficulty so because you know if you do not understand these problems there is no point in writing certain hartree-fock equation and all these kind of you will lose the um, the real beauty of the whole lecture that's why i we want to go from the beginning right so angular momentum is a very very important concept that we i know you have uh, it is it will be good for us that i can take this background i leave the mathematical details for your exercise but i'll focus more on the physical concepts why it is necessary to us this is all this is most of the times i see that quantum chemistry has the problem right so we'll i'll keep on writing these kind of equations and focus mostly on the physical aspects and then we'll take the hydrogen atom problem okay Okay, I think uh, if you have anything else to say, please say. Uh, I'm listening. Otherwise, we'll see in the next week. Uh, sorry, next I, I will see in the uh, on Wednesday. Bolok, is there any problem? Hai to? No. Okay, very good then. So then we'll meet uh, on Wednesday, two o'clock.